So a couple of months ago, I was given a longer Ray 5 10 watt laser engraving and cutting machine to test out. If you've watched a few of my recent videos, you've seen it in action. A few weeks ago, they contacted me and asked me if I'd like to upgrade to a 20 watt version. I said sure, so they sent me a 20 watt laser, which I installed onto my original 10 watt machine. I didn't include any of the installation steps because longer provided a video, which was way better than anything I could have put together anyway. The entire laser swap out was pretty easy to do and took about an hour. Right now, Longer is selling it at $8.59, though if you use the promo code on the screen, that'll take $60 off, and they'll include a free air assist pump. I'll include a link in product specs in the description. Here are some new features on the 20 watt model that weren't on the original Ray 5. The laser head itself now features an integrated port for an air assist hose. The 10 watt version required replacing the actual shroud that went over the laser itself. The mechanism for raising and lowering the laser is more robust as well. The original version was okay, but this one is easier to manipulate, especially if you have larger hands. Focal length is still adjusted with a setup block, but now you can put it anywhere under the laser rather than in an inconvenient spot in the back like the original Ray 5. Then lastly, electronic limit switches were added to the X and Y axis. I'm just going to take a quick moment here to say that all these tests were done and set up using Lightburn. I'm not going to get into the use of Lightburn because there's already a lot of great tutorials out there. I also already covered how to set up Lightburn for the Ray 5 in a previous video, link in the upper right hand corner. Before I installed the 20 watt laser head, I decided to do a little baseline test to set some sort of standard to see how much more powerful 20 watts would be over 10. I figured I already knew that this machine could engrave, so I wanted to see how much better its performance would be while cutting. I already knew from testing and using the Ray 5 10 watt that the machine pretty much maxed out for single pass cutting with quarter inch thick plywood. So for this test I decided to use 9 ply half inch thick Baltic birch. I did 6 cuts all at 100% power, the first at 500 millimeters per second, then 400, 300, 200, 100, and the final at 50 millimeters per second. I had no expectation that I was going to cut through the half inch thick plywood, but I wanted to see how far the laser would penetrate. These are very rough measurements, but what I saw wasn't really all that surprising. With slower speeds, the laser penetrated further into the wood. And I definitely hit a point of diminishing returns once the speed was lowered below 100 millimeters per second. After installing the 20 watt laser, I performed the exact same test over again. While this runs, I'm just going to say I didn't go crazy overly scientific with how I tested. This is just a tool to me and it's something that helps make my woodworking better. It's not like my primary hobby or anything. Laser engraving machines are cool and useful, but I'm pretty much a novice with them and while there is a vast potential there and a myriad of settings that can be tweaked to make it even better, I'm probably not going to get that far into it. And I mean that as in life in general, not just this video. Anyway, what I noticed on the final two passes in my cutting test with the 20 watt laser is the smoke was coming up from underneath the piece, meaning I had full penetration. And there it is. What I found with the 20 watt test compared to the 10 watt was that every single cut was almost exactly twice as deep. As with the test with the 10 watt laser, by the time I got to 50 millimeters per second, the cut started to get a little more ragged and less efficient. So next I did a little test to try and actually cut out pieces of the half inch Baltic birch. I ran this test at 100% power with single and double passes of both 100 and 50 millimeters per second each. What I found was that with at least this particular material, 100 millimeters with two passes cut much better. 50 millimeter two passes didn't even actually cut all the way through. I'm going to chalk up the poor performance at the slower speeds to the cut line getting too clogged up with burnt up material. So this test shows to me at least that better cuts are generally a function of more powerful lasers but also high enough speeds. Next, I ran the exact same test except on a piece of quarter inch thick solid cherry. 
What I found with the hardwood and with the smaller thickness is that I cut cleanly through it with one pass and two. I cut the test short though with the 50 millimeter per second because it was just burning the wood up. I thought this was pretty awesome, so I thought, why not, and I just try to do it on a piece of three quarter inch thick walnut. This is the tail end of a 100 millimeter per second two pass cut, and I could tell right away that I was definitely not getting all the way through. This was not particularly surprising. It probably would have been more scientific to do this test with a three quarter inch thick piece of cherry, but this is what I had on hand. As you can see, the laser did not go very far through. I thought maybe that solid wood and plywood would cut different, so I tried the test again only with three quarter inch thick plywood. This time, I got sort of through on some of the cuts, not enough to freely cut the pieces out, but it definitely penetrated way further than it did with the solid wood. At this point, I thought I'd move on from wood and see how the laser did on something like stainless steel. Stainless is generally easier to engrave than other metals, and with the diode laser, it's about the best you can hope for. I cut two circles onto this washer, one at 100 millimeters and the other at 50, and both of them came out really well. So then I decided to see how it would do with more filled in engraving. I thought the test was pretty impressive. I tried it again on some brass just to see what would happen, and this was the result. The lower one was done by blackening the brass with the candle, and the upper one was done with some spray paint. They both came out barely visible, but the laser did discolor the metal. I already knew that the Ray 5 10 watt could etch glass pretty well, so I decided to see if I could cut it with the 20 watt. However, when I did this test, I forgot that diode lasers can really only engrave glass when you do something like coat it with spray paint first. Otherwise, the glass just reflects the laser. So I repeated the test, this time putting some primer down on the glass. I wasn't actually expecting the laser to cut the glass, but I wanted to see if it could make a really good line for a clean break. It's not as though using a glass cutter for a straight line is especially hard, but I wanted to see if I could do it more precisely this way. As it turned out, scoring the glass with the laser made for a really clean break line. I'm pretty sure this would have worked just the same with the 10 watt laser installed, but I never tested it that way before, so this was kind of a first for me. But the entire reason I started down this path was I wanted to see if I could cut out something like a round shape in the glass. So this was my test, and I only did one test. Needless to say, it did not go well. I think with more experimentation, this process could be useful, but I did not really feel like cleaning up more broken glass after this. I think for the time being, I'm going to continue using a traditional glass cutter when I need to do this sort of thing. Anyway, for the woodworker, what is a laser cutter actually useful for, aside from doing things like applying maker's marks and personalization to projects? While I was playing around with the 20 watt, I was also working on this cutting board and I needed to add handholds to the sides. I cut this template out of half inch thick plywood, though I did have to shave it down a little bit because my router just couldn't go deep enough. So without the laser machine or having something like a 3D printer, the most accessible and easy way to do this would have been to cut it out using a hole saw and a jigsaw to make it all straight and then sand it and file it to make it perfect. But cutting the template out with the laser was way quicker and easier. I've already been experimenting with using laser cut templates in a few of my other projects and it's definitely proving to be one of the best ways to do it. So anyway, my full takeaway on the Ray 5 20 watt it's twice as powerful as the 10 watt and four times as powerful as the original Ray 5 was. If your needs didn't extend beyond just engraving, I think I would stick with the original Ray 5 itself. If you wanted to cut stuff though, the 20 watt is a huge upgrade beyond the 10 watt. I would definitely recommend it. Anyway, if you made it this far, thanks for watching.